Brooklyn-born hero, First Lieutenant John Earl Warren, Jr. This is History's Heroes Heard, the channel where we tell interesting and inspiring stories about history's forgotten heroes. At the age of 22, U.S. Army First Lieutenant John Earl Warren, Jr., a Brooklyn native, threw himself on an enemy grenade to save the lives of three others from injury or death on January 14, 1969, in Vietnam. John Earl Warren, Jr. was born and raised in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn, New York City, New York. He was son to Lillian Warren, who worked for the Transit Authority, and John Warren, a former soldier and a maintenance worker at a nursing home. He has one surviving immediate family member, Gloria Warren Baskin, a younger sister. At the age of 70, she still lives in the same Brooklyn neighborhood that she and her brother were raised in. Though five years apart, the siblings shared the same birthday, November 16, John born in 1946 and Gloria born in 1951. Even though their parents divorced while he was younger, family was central to his life. He grew up in a close-knit family with his mother, sister, aunts, and cousins. They spent time together at family gatherings and church activities through their Baptist faith. Although John was older than Gloria, he always included her and didn't mind taking her places that he enjoyed handball, bowling, dancing, and going to church activities. They had attended Brown Memorial Baptist Church in Clinton Hill. He is remembered as a serious and outgoing young man. John attended Eastern District High School and completed two years of study at Brooklyn College before he was drafted into the Army. He tried to make the best of it by enrolling in officer school and a leadership course. He served in the Vietnam War in the United States Army as a 1st Lieutenant in Company C, 2nd Battalion Mechanized, 22nd Infantry, 25th Infantry Division. Lieutenant Warren was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his bravery at Thay Ninh Province, Republic of Vietnam. He was leading a platoon that came under heavy fire on July 14, 1969. As his men advanced toward an enemy position, a grenade landed in the middle of their group. He fell in the direction of the grenade and was killed, shielding at least three men from injury or death, according to his Medal of Honor citation. His citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, First Lieutenant Warren distinguished himself at the cost of his life while serving as a platoon leader with Company C. While moving through a rubber plantation to reinforce another friendly unit, Company C came under intense fire from a well-fortified enemy force. Disregarding his safety, First Lieutenant Warren, with several of his men, began maneuvering through the hail of enemy fire toward the hostile positions. When he had come to within six feet of one of the enemy bunkers and was preparing to toss a hand grenade into it, an enemy grenade was suddenly thrown into the middle of his small group. Thinking only of his men, First Lieutenant Warren fell in the direction of the grenade, thus shielding those around him from the blast. His action, performed at the cost of his life, saved three men from serious or mortal injury. First Lieutenant Warren's ultimate action of sacrifice to save the lives of his men was in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflects great credit on him, his unit, and the U.S. Army. His medal was posthumously awarded to his family by President Richard Nixon on August 6, 1970. On the day of his passing, John's sister and his mother went to the dentist. When they returned home, the landlord told her that two officers had come to the house and left a number for her to call. Gloria recalls, My mother and I knew there was something wrong. After calling the number and they told her they'd come back to the house, she knew. She just dropped the phone and started crying. Gloria called her aunts at church and asked them to come over. They arrived at the same time as the officers. So now we were all standing in the living room when they informed us of my brother's passing. My mother and two aunts dropped. I stood there in disbelief. I think I was in shock. It didn't really hit me till the next day. Lieutenant John Earl Warren Jr.'s legacy is now permanently embedded in his Brooklyn community, as New York City's only Army post now bears the name of Lieutenant John Earl Warren, Jr., instead of the name of the Confederate general who led the South's attempt at succession. The street was renamed John Warren Avenue on May 20, 2022, 
to honor First Lieutenant John Earl Warren, Jr. Previously, the street had been called General Lee Avenue, after Robert E. Lee, who served at the base 20 years before the Civil War. The new name was unveiled at a ceremony at the base, Fort Hamilton, which sits on the Brooklyn side of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The change came after a years-long push by local officials that gained steam amid the national outcry over the killing of George Floyd by the police in Minneapolis two years ago. Colonel Craig A. Martin, commander of the garrison, said that he had wanted to change the name since he began his stint at Fort Hamilton in July 2020. The street is the main artery that extends from the visitor's entrance to the other side of the base. If indeed we want to be leaders in the Army and say that we are people first and we want to make a difference, we have to take action, Colonel Martin said. We can't just talk. We have to make a difference. John Warren died so that others could live, he said. Yvette K. Borsicott, Acting Assistant Secretary of the Army for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, said Lieutenant Warren's story was one of an ordinary man of extraordinary bravery. Lieutenant Warren was a hero who will continue to be a source of inspiration for generations to come, she said. Those generations will know Lieutenant Warren as a son of Crown Heights, a gallant soldier, and as the best that our nation can offer. Lieutenant Warren grew up on Union Street in Brooklyn, New York. Other name changes may soon be coming. The Naming Commission, created by Congress last year, is charged with recommending new names for nine Defense Department posts that commemorate Confederate officers, including Fort Bragg in North Carolina and Fort Hood in Texas. The law instructs the Defense Secretary to implement a plan based on the Commission's recommendations by 2024. Ms. Warren Baskin and her parents traveled to Washington in 1970 to receive the award from President Richard Nixon. The medal is now part of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture's collection. Ms. Warren Baskin said she was ecstatic to learn about the renaming in her home borough. Many relatives and friends accompanied her to the ceremony on Friday. This is an honor to have a street sign here at Fort Hamilton Army Base with his name on it. In Brooklyn, his home with Army personnel and their family members, and retirees walking on John Warren Avenue, Ms. Warren Baskin said. I hope that they would take the time to look his name up and know that he is deserving of this honor, that he sacrificed his life to save three of his Army men. City Councilman Justin Brannan, who represents the area around the base and was one of the officials who had pushed for the change, applauded the Army's reversal of its position. Not only did Robert E. Lee lead some of the Confederacy's most consequential victories in their fight to protect slavery, he was also a traitor to his own country, Mr. Brannan said. I can think of no better anecdote than renaming this street in honor of John Earl Warren, Jr., a Brooklyn-born hero. When asked what she thought John may want other people to know about him, Gloria said, He might want people to know that he was proud to be a soldier of the United States Army and to not be afraid to help your fellow man. Thanks for watching. Please comment your thoughts below, like and share this video, and subscribe for more interesting and inspiring stories of our history's heroes.